and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee and I am your host for this program. Today's topic and our guest is State House Representative Darius Kila. Representative, welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business. Aloha. Thank you, Kathleen, for having me. Of course. Tell our viewers about yourself. I know you've gone over that so many times during your first run for office, but let's do this all over again. Tell our viewers about yourself. Oh, of course. It's not a big deal. So, aloha. My name is Darius Kila, Hawaii State House Representative, District 44. But first and foremost, I'm I'm at the end of the day and at the beginning of it, I'm still a son. <laughs> so I'm a son, a grandson. I am a former legislative staffer for my predecessor, Representative Stacey Lynn Eli. I am a former neighborhood board member for Nanakuli Ma'ili. I previously worked at the Council for Native Point Advancement. I am the vice chair for the House Committee on Transportation, the vice chair for the Oahu Metropolitan Planning Organization. I sit on the Housing Committee. I sit on the Finance Committee here in the House as well. And I am the third youngest member in the legislature at 27. I was 26 when I got elected. That's wonderful. I was just talking to um, a different group of folks the other day, and we were attempting to figure out who the youngest member was. So I love that you marked that. And I appreciate that, too, that there are, you know, like younger people of like your generation coming up and getting uh, involved in, in the way that you are. Oh, so, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think for to be in positions that folks don't necessarily see you in, it's important to be present so folks allow that that capacity to see themselves here. Right. And this is this is your first term because I remember when you were still running and I had the honor of meeting your grandmother and it, it was a whole family affair. Tell us a bit more about that. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Grandma Leslie. You know, I constantly tell folks that when you see a lot of folks succeeding, whether it is as a legislator or even just public service in general or in their career, they often are failing somewhere else, right? So I like to think I'm doing a great job as a legislator, but if you talk to my grandma, my mom, or my dad, they will tell you that there are some shortcomings in the household, but I, I truly have, not, not even lying, I have the best family unit. So there's Grandma Leslie, uh, my mom, Heidi, my dad, Stephen, my brother, Corey, and my sister, Jordan, all under one household. I have four other siblings as well. They're they're a little older than me, but that is the family unit that allows Rep Kila to be Rep Kila. I love that. So I'm guessing that is part of what inspired you, but I'd like you to continue with that. What, you know, motivated you to run for office? Because we know that along with, you know, getting recognition and helping people out in your district, it also comes with a lot of scrutiny. So I would love to know what inspired you to want to go down this path. You know, truth be told that I lifelong resident of the of the Leeward Coast, right? But it wasn't until 2020 that I actually relocated home full time. And it was partly due to COVID. I was in Oregon. I was attending school and realizing that every opportunity I had lined up had somewhat fell apart because of what was going on. My study is in broadcast journalism. I always wanted to be a reporter, but news stations were not renewing their leases. They were working remotely, so they were not hiring. And that was familiar across the country. So it was only, I guess, the best decision to move home. So 2020, if, if you remember, it was the year of President Trump, President Biden going head to head feeling very activated in that election and trying to find a way to capitalize on that and not wanting to fall behind, throwing my name into the ring for neighborhood board out of 18 names, right? Being the fifth highest vote getter and also being the youngest member on the board then as well. And, and seeing that as a grassroots way to get involved. Love the work there, working with city partners and whatnot, but I'm very ambitious and wanting to see things move quickly. I got the chance to meet former representative Eli, kind of coming under her wing and then starting my work in the nonprofit with Council for Native Fine Advancement. But seeing like all the work that just happens for folks who give and give and never even aspiring to run for office. But I, 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 truly don't know if I would have if if someone didn't tell me that they felt I was worthy enough to do so and I think rep Eli saw that in me before I saw it in myself and so it was encouragement from her to take the leap for office and knowing what's at stake 
that this Hawaii that we live in is ever changing. And if there are things and actions that we do not take now, we may cease to lose that fabric of identity. And something I always hold on my shoulders is that in 20 years, I'll still be alive to see the decisions that we make today for good and for bad. So when I navigate the legislature, I think about that. Yeah, thank you for that. And that is such a refreshing perspective. Thank you, Representative. Could you tell us more about your district, the district that you serve? Yeah, so District 44 is technically new, but not new. The lines now include from the beginning of Ma'ili on the Leeward Coast. So for folks who may not know, it's right before Waianae Comprehensive Health Center. And the line encompasses Ma'ili, Nanakuli, Honakaihale, and Ko'olina. So from Ma'ili all the way to the target cutoff in Kapule, that is District 44. We're Mauka Tumakai District. I tell folks we have beaches, we have mountains, we have homes, we have farmland, we have some businesses, a lot of residential, a lot of homelands, and and be it to a lot of folks that don't know, District 44 has the highest concentration of Native Hawaiians in the world. So that is something I, I, I carry with pride. I actually did not know that e either. So thank you, Representative, for letting us know and, and reminding the viewers out there as well. So let's pull up some of the photos that you graciously shared with us. And thank you for that, by the way. So like I mentioned, this is your first term. Could you tell us more about your experience? One, as one of the youngest legislators, and two, as someone who ran for the first time, what were some challenges that you ran into? And you ran too during the pandemic, right? So yes, so it, was, it was very, God, it, it's a, it's a, it's a different experience, I will say that. And even now, looking back, it's only been a year and it's almost a blur because everything is just moving so, so quickly. And I, I say to some extent, time doesn't exist in the legislature. And I, I think sometimes it does come in manifest and to be true that one day it's opening day and we just closed the legislative session this last May. And so as a first term legislator, it, it's a lot to learn because I knew a lot as a staffer, but then taking the role as a legislator, it's a whole different ballgame. But I'm grateful for the foundation I had as a legislative staffer because time is not on your side. And when you only have so much X amount of days to get work done, I felt much more prepared being a legislative staffer heading into this, heading into the role as a legislator. And then running post pandemic, so this is 2022, it, 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 it's interesting because there's a whole way to do it. And I, I learned a lot along the way and I still learn a lot more now. And I, I tell you, I'm just truly blessed because when I was, I, I'm out and about, I get to tell folks like what other 27 year old gets to talk about or be in this predicament. You know, a lot of folks in my age group they're working two, three jobs. They have two to three children. They're they're barely, you know, they're they're barely making it here in Hawaii. And I feel some sentiment in that capacity as well. That if I didn't live in a multi generational household, I, I I too would be struggling. But in some way, at, as living together may be viewed as a disadvantage, is something that makes Hawaii so unique to have multiple generations in one household. So as much as that it attests to maybe the struggles, I also look at it as the one thing that makes us truly unique. I love that. So as a freshman, well, not anymore, but as a former <laughs> freshman legislator, one well, of- still a freshman because uh, yeah, yeah, we have one more true. legislator. You're yeah. right, you're right. Thank you for that correction. <laughs> so you are on the House Finance Committee, which is a great way to learn about everything that's going on, as well as two other committees that you mentioned earlier. Could you tell us more about that, especially since that committee is where a lot of bills go through, right? Um, yes. So yeah, just expand on that and tell us about your experience in being one of the more powerful committees in the state house. So knowing that we've had 18 freshmen, four Republicans, 14 Democrats, at some point, not everyone can go on. I mean, it'd be great for folks to learn from finance, but not everybody can. So to have felt to be chosen to sit on that committee is, is something I'm very grateful for. And so knowing that 
that is the place where bills come to most of the times. You're touching subject groups and subject matter that are outside of your scope. You're hearing firsthand from advocates, folks who are supporting a bill, against the bill. You're hearing from the departments, the nonprofits, the for-profits. You know, I mean, you're touching every walk of life that sometimes you don't get to experience if you just stay in a subject matter committee. So sitting there analyzing, and I mean, <laughs> I, I wasn't I wasn't proficient in some subjects around numbers, exclusively math. And so now to be sitting in a committee where all it is is math and numbers, it's kind of funny, but I've actually exceeded more in that capacity than textbook algebra. But I, 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 I make the testament that we really in finance on the house side where this is the, the budget is what affects people's lives here in Hawaii. It's projects that get funded. It's positions that get funded. It's also programs that get cut or programs that get added. And we scrutinize every line item of the budget before we prepare it and send it out to the Senate and then go to conference and then send it to the governor. That is one thing I did not anticipate being so much work, but putting forth that document and seeing it through was is something I'm very proud of. And only as time comes, it'll allow, allow me to be even more effective in what we create and draft out of the budget. What are some other bills that you introduced that you want to talk about or expand on? Yeah, you know what is so funny? I, I didn't realize how quickly bills move in the legislature. So I introduced 21. And when it finally crossed over into the Senate, it was five. When we headed into conference, I had about four bills that were still moving, finishing the session with two bills. And if if we were truly graded by the amount of bills we passed, I think everybody would fail. But it's not a necessary just with the bills you pass or bills you draft or bills you introduce. It's the conversations you have along the way that allow for things to change because not everything needs a bill. But I am proud to say I passed two bills this session. So HB 278, which appropriates a million dollars to fund a public health awareness campaign for Alzheimer's, and HB 1294, which was started around this catalyst for good government to make it transparent that when folks are running for office, they uh, have, have publicly available their legal first and last name. Wow, that is awesome. Um, and I know this is, I'll ask it anyway, because I know your priorities, like you came in and you have you had your priorities, right? And then the, the more you learned about your district, I would imagine that there are some priorities that you may not have been aware of, but you're like, okay, I need to put this on the forefront. So at this point, like, how are your prior, your personal priorities coming into as, you know, someone who would like to lead or who is leading and your constituents priorities how are they aligned like where are they aligned right now you know it actually as it's the knowing what I was getting into prior allowed me to see what legislation to put forward I mean to be on a subject matter for transportation when that's one of the top issues in my district and the Alzheimer's campaign is totally influenced by the fact that we prioritize kupuna in our community and looking at good governance and folks asking for that putting forth the bill for transparency around first and last name candidates running for office. In some way, I, I feel like I'm right on the mark, but even along the way on the last parts of drafting legislation, we created a bill that would hope that would have directed grant funding through the Department of Agriculture for chicken farmers, because that was something that came up right before the due date of bills to be filed. So knowing I, I have a very good idea of what what's going on and I think reflecting on what I introduced it, it is a good summary of our priorities I love that um as far as you traveling I know we talked about that previously so tell us about your more recent travels in June you mentioned that you were just in DC for the way on yeah. as well as um in Vegas so tell us about those two trips you know that is the one thing I didn't anticipate in this in this role is that we do amazing work in Hawaii, but sometimes that amazing work takes us outside of Hawaii to be the, the, the platform for discussion. So Hawaii on the Hill is hosted by the Chamber of Commerce, first time in four years. But this was my also 
first time to Washington, D.C. I never have been, but to have gone as the legislator for the District of 40, District 44 and represent Nanakuli Maili, Honokai Hoko'olina on a federal stage, I mean, in front of the HUD, HUD secretary, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, I mean, to talk about things that are happening right in our community on a federal policy stage is I never imagined in a million years. And then to be there to bolster and support our local small businesses and put them on the national stage, I I am beyond proud of what Hawaii is producing. And I walked away from that with such pride. And then going afterwards to the first, to the inaugural Western Hawaiian convention hosted by the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement. I had a chance to sit on the legislative panel to engage folks with myself, Lieutenant Governor Luke, Senator Kilokolole, and Representative Holt. And we just talked about the session, but these one-on-one -on -one intimate panels are sometimes things that people don't always get from us. And so to have spent 90 minutes of just talk story, question and answer was so rewarding. But seeing the struggles of Lahui in Hawaii and then Lahui in the continental America, it's so different, but beckons to me that the work is needed. And if anything, I walked away from it, my talks at Representative Holt, is that when is somebody from the Lahui in Nevada, Las Vegas, going to step up to the plate and run for office there? Wow, that that is a good question that I haven't even explored, and I'm glad you you posed that. You know, yeah. that question is out there, definitely. Well, I think one thing we talked about at the conference is that a lot of folks move here and they make they make home, and then these folks do run for office. So as Lahui Hawaiians and folks from Hawaii have moved away into these different spaces they need to set roots and sometimes their roots is the catalyst of running for a public position or a public seat. They have different structures, so commissioners, council members, but I, I truly think that is the next step for folks in Nevada. Okay, this is more of an aspirational question next, okay? So um, seeing your experience and learning more, what do you hope to see and bring in your district? Um, as you continue to be in office? One, one thing that I, I think that comes off the top of my head and it keeps me up at night is seeing through the construction of a performing arts center for Nanakuli High and Intermediate School. In my first year of being able to allocate and secure $6 million towards the start of the performing arts center, if that is one thing I can work on to leave behind when my time in office is done, I can, I, I can feel proud of that. The performing arts have kept a lot of our kids out of sometimes dangerous situations and knowing what the performing arts center has given to our community to give them a formal space to practice and make that statement that this community cares about what our kids are doing that they deserve a state-of-the-art facility to match them as such so that is one thing if outside of legislation for community if i can work towards to give and leave behind, I, I, I will feel content. And also working to upgrade a lot of the things along the way. We have a lot of money coming into our community to do a lot of infrastructure upgrades that have been delayed for forever. And then finding other ways to just make sure folks have every access to support our community. I, I, I welcome anyone into our community that wants to help because the, 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 the work is there. Yeah, that's wonderful. And on that note, um, how do you think government and businesses can work, not necessarily perfectly, but harmoniously together to help Hawaii? Well, knowing that sometimes government can do things that businesses can't, and knowing that businesses sometimes fill the void of government, looking to find those two parties to work succinctly and not necessarily against each other. I, I, I always think firsthand about mixed-use development that exists in Kapolei, where they have almost a, a perfect model for live work play and finding that these different groups don't necessarily have to work against each other but can work together because if in a perfect world i'd love to keep the workforce that comes out of the leeward coast on the leeward coast because the track to get to work is sometimes another journey in itself and somewhat creating these pockets of economic development 
in some way is the best best platform to support our Hawaii residents. That that's a big dream of mine. But knowing that there is more commonalities and differences, working to find those. That's wonderful. So with all this great work that you have done so far, and congratulations by the way on your Thank first you. year. With that also comes challenges. Could you describe, you know, some that you ran into, some that you've learned that you'd like to share with people? You know, it's not all all, all roses, butterflies, and 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 TV interviews. There there are times where I'm up at two o'clock and the work keeps me up. You know, I I'm great. I in some way, with my only commitment being my family and my dog Miley. My my time is much more expendable, but it, it is tough. You know, I, I did have that idea, you no know, getting into office, especially my district, because there's so much need that the work as a legislator is sometimes more demanding than other other seats. But finding that balance of it, you know, and, and knowing that there's been a lot of sacrifice that I, I as, being as young as I am, there are also things that I'm not doing it 27 that other folks are but i if i could see my community to be a better place i'm okay with some of those sacrifices that i have to make along the way you're not missing out you're fine <laughs> and you are such a dynamic character so i'm sure wherever you go you know you're not missing out um, oh thank you of course so for for the people out there that are watching um i i feel like you you have a very inspiring story and you're an inspiring person what would you like to tell them if they do want to pursue running for office especially if they are on you know the young side or what society considers young for running into um, positions with such responsibilities going into places and knowing that sometimes you're not wanted or welcomed but asserting yourself into the spaces is just as important and knowing that if you're uncomfortable, you're everywhere you're supposed to be. I, I tell folks, you cannot grow in, in spaces of being comfortable. And if we're being quite frank, I, I just told my brother last night, I have not felt comfortable for the last two years. So I feel good on where I'm going. And I know sometimes the uncertainty is scary, but it that uncertainty, it truly allows personal growth. So even also knowing that investing in yourself may not always have the financial outcomes that you might want, but the investment in yourself will always find its way to come into fruition years later. So I find honestly the best things to give is giving without expecting anything in return, because just the way life goes, it comes back tenfold. That's wonderful. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add that I may not have covered during my questions or during no. the conversation? I uh, there are so much there's so much work to be done, but I couldn't have asked for a better time to be a part of the work. I mean, we're on the cusp of I, I feel in my silos of work that there's so much going on. You know, I mean, I with governor pointing the the emergency on homelessness and wanting to build Kauhale. We're in talks right now of one of the 15 Kauhale projects to be in Nanukuli. I mean, those are things I never anticipated running for office. And then now to be in the conversation that systemically we can make, I have the chance to make a change in my community. I, I couldn't have asked for a better time to be a part of the conversation and elevate Nanukuli. I always tell folks that District 44 will be the light, not just for the state, but for the world. And so whatever way we go, I, I hope to be that change. There you go. I love that optimism and idealism. Thank you, Representative. If people would like to get a hold of you or learn more about you or your district, where do they go? Repkila at capital.hawaii.gov. 808-586-9480. I'm so open to meeting and talking because as much as folks sometimes look for government for answers, I look to community for solutions as well because I can't do it alone. I'm, I'm, I'm a true believer in shared governance. And so knowing that it's public, private, and government coming together for those solutions, I welcome anyone for Kako and Talk Story. Representative Darius Kila, thank you so much for being on Connecting Hawaii Business today. We appreciate you.
Well, hello, Kathleen, for the chance. And my first time on Think Tech with you folks, so I couldn't have asked for a better, in, better first time and to be with you. Thank you, thank you. And thank you to Think Tech Hawaii as well, and Jay Fidel for making programs like this possible. We had Haley and Mike who helped us out today. Until next time, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.